Disclaimer, please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk, then play at half speed. Thank you. Aye, we be the last three immortals. Aye, long foretold was our final encounter. Yes, but wasn't there foretold to be a nurer? When only four there are that is left of us, shall we meet on the mountain of Ben Nevis? I think it's Ben Nevis. Is that supposed Nevis, to rhyme? Nevis, Ben Nevis. Stay in character, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, and it was filth when you failed Sir Rob Ben Nuts for nurture. That event summoned us here. Well, as you say, Dame Peggy, where be he that is late? I just, I just, seriously, why? Why all the way up here? I, seriously, it's the highest mountain. Dude, you told us to meet at the Ben Nevis Church. Yeah, the one down there at the foot of the mountains. Also, what's with the funny accents? Oh shit, you guys are faking accents too? <laughs> I was only doing it because Josh is doing it. I, I mean, we can keep doing it. I, I, I really want to do an accent. No, no, no. It, you ruined it. It's dumb. All right. Well, uh, uh, let us commence with the gathering. There can be only one. Wait, wait, wait. Let's have a drink first. You know, I, I have this old scotch I was saving just for this. No, hey, I'm chopping off head sober. To the gathering. To the gathering. To the gathering. Oh. Poke Mahone! Oh god, what is this? Oh, <laughs> Tastes like scotch tape! Oh. <laughs> oh, oh god, now she's got me doing it. Oh, ooh, I was fine before, but oh god. Oh! That's right, the cork rotted like 200 years ago. I knew I was forgetting to fix something. Oh, well, waste not, want not! <laughs> Like seventy-five percent solid, Tom. You don't it's like eating brown curdled milk. <laughs> well, enough talk. There can be only one. <laughs> wait, wait, no! I'm still throwing up. My sword! What the hell? Oh right, holy ground. We're on holy ground. We can't fight on holy ground. And now it's raining. I'm not fighting outside in the rain. So now what? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. You have to understand, that thing is out there. Ronald Lacey and Buckaroo Banzai can't be reasoned with. Plus the parents are dead. Clancy Brown to Highlander can't be bargained with. Christopher Lambert to Mortal Kombat doesn't feel pity, just like Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa to The Art of War doesn't feel remorse. Or Michael Bean in Aliens doesn't feel fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Get down. Until you take Jeanette Goldstein to Terminator 2. Judgment Day is coming to firepit.podbean.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh make their own fate and face the 90s summer blockbuster Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It's the vacation determination every Tuesday here at the Fire Pit. Hasta la vista, baby. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to the Fire Pit. I'm Tom McLeod of the Clan McLeod, and here on the highlands of the internet, we bring an episode for the ages as we continue our- Stop! <clears throat> I mean, I mean, we continue our vacation to termination. As per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them on to this one. Now, to tell us about who we're watching and what we're watching, I turn things over to Dan. Thank you, Tom. Evening, folks. Well, that's Irish. That's bad. That's terrible. Just oh, can't, uh, Just can't, can't, can't do a <laughs> Scottish accent. Oh, God. I'm Dan McLeod of the Clan McLeod, and last week we followed Ronald Lacey from Raiders oh, of the Lost no. Ark. To- Just stop. Go. Just stop. Oh, your Scottish no. is worse than your Irish. I know. Oh. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Meanwhile, my Scottish and Irish friends online are unfriending me. Um... <laughs> 
Last week, we followed Ronald Lacey from Raiders of the Lost Ark to the adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the eighth dimension, where he got bat effing crazy with the rest of the cast, including the one and only Clancy Brown, Lex Luthor himself. But before he wanted Superman's head, he was after Connor McCloud's head in 1986's Highlander. That film would launch a franchise, but more on that later. To give us a rundown of tonight's film and some box office dollars, if he managed to find any, I'll send things over to Josh. Oh, thank you, Dan. I'm Josh McCloud of Clan McCloud oh, it's, here. It's oh. like someone's jabbing haggis mm. into my ears. We're watching Highlander. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence, guys. Makes me feel 10 feet tall. <laughs> A 1986 fantasy film starring Clancy Brown alongside one Sir Sean Connery, rest in peace, Christopher Lambert and Roxanne Hart, with songs by no other than the guys who did Flash Gordon, Queen. And like Dan said, it launched a franchise and is yet another cult classic we'll be checking out on this show. So Highlander, released March 7th, 1986, has a runtime of 111 million a hundred has a runtime of 111 minutes. Can you tell me I've done this in a couple of weeks? <laughs> yeah. Have we had a break? <laughs> yeah, that's a runtime of 111 million minutes. <laughs> we started watching it in the eighties and we're only about a quarter of the way through. No runtime of 111 minutes, budget of $19 million and a box office uh, return of 12.9. Sad price is right. Music. Bum, 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 bum. Bum. Wow. Has a Rotten Tomato score of 69%. Nice. Nice. An audience score of 79%. And an IMDb score of 7 out of 10. So now the box office on Highlander is interesting. It looks like it was only in theaters for a short time. And by short, I mean box office mojo is only reporting two weeks. Highlander premiered number seven at the box office with $2.4 million. Now, do you guys care to take a whack at what number one was in the box office on this particular weekend? 1986? If you guys know it, I will be surprised. It's on its second week of release, March 1986. March? Okay. No, I've said these three words, but it's been a very long time since I said them in this order. Hmm, boop, back, boop. You say butts a lot, so... <laughs> um, I don't think I've said them on this podcast. I'll just save you from uh, the guessing. It's pretty in pink. That is something Josh says all the time. Uh, yeah, no, we can't it's... shut him up about that. Yeah, wow. Yeah, all, all the time. And then uh, and number two was the... Uh, was that really famous uh, TV show that that aired in the early two, double aughts, House? Wait, I don't think that's the same thing. That's the prequel. Oh, ooh, maybe like how Highlander eventually became a TV show. That was the movie that inspired the TV show of House. That's it. It's canon. It's canon. Got to be. But anyway, this is actually a fairly like doldrums weekend in the box office. Only notables I can really see is the color purple uh, Wildcats. Is that the one with Goldie Hawn and... I don't know if Kurt Russell's in that one. Yes, I think so. I, I think Goldie Hawn's in that one. I don't, I think, I don't, I don't know. But uh, Wildcats, um, FX, Dan, you'd like this one. It was on its fourth week of release. At number 11 in the box office was the Delta Force. Oh, that's a good movie. And then on its 36th week of release, at number 13 in the box office, was the original Back to the Future. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're but not wrong. Slow week. It was very much... Um, yeah, Highlander only pulled in, like I said, 5.9 million. Like it was at number 109 on the box office for 1986. Take a quick guess. It was number one for 1986. You said Back to the Future played, so I'm guessing Back to the Future. Yeah, that I'm gonna. Out, that was that came out in 1985, but it did have uh, it did pull money in, but actually, no, Back to the Future was 47 in 86. The 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 number one movie the number one movie nineteen eighty six mm hmm Ghostbusters no that was eighty four oh 84. yeah that's right huh. Star Trek Good four event. we watched it on this podcast oh. Buckaroo Banzai no <laughs> that, was, that was not the biggest hit in any dimension um <laughs> including the eighth um we've watched it on this podcast it was kind of a uh, milestone episode too oh we've had no uh d d d Top Gun there you go. Oh, go damn. Yeah, yeah, wow. 19, yeah, 1986. Yeah, Top Gun. That was the, the episode that started the whole Road to Independence Day, which thus began the format of our podcast. 
Yeah, that was uh, number one, pulling $176 million for 1986. But other movies that came out that year, Aliens, which pulled in $85 million, um, Stand By Me, which pulled in $52 million, and uh, Rocky IV, which pulled in $38 million. A lot of familiar movies that came out in 1986. Yeah. Night of the Navigator, 18.5. Ooh, ooh, one we've got to get to on this podcast. Howard the Duck. Uh, Vito. <laughs> Vito. Oh, ho, ho. hard Vito. No, no, we we, we have one. <laughs> That's what we're just going to have to bite the bullet and get to. Join our Sorry. Discord and let Josh know, no, we do not have to get to Howard the Dude, Duck. if you want to send it to Discord, I can guarantee you they're going to be like, Howard the Duck. Which, yeah, not- put a pin in this for later. I have an idea, but I want to run it by you guys. But okay. uh, that's all I've got for the rundown. It was a fairly, fairly, dare I say, lame weekend, with the exception of Highlander. But then again, it's been a long time since I've seen this movie. It's more on that in expectation. But uh, Tom, Tom, what do you have for the meta? Guys, we are watching Highlander. Tagline, there can be only one. Summary, the immortal Scottish swordsman Connor McLeod played by Christopher Lambert, must confront the last of his immortal opponents, Kurgan, played by Clancy Brown, a murderously brutal barbarian who lusts for the fabled prize. Generally, what we can expect here is a film produced by producers who are more concerned about money than quality, uh, with writers not known for quality... A director who was used to making music videos, but with a quality enough cast who had enough fun making the film that in the end, at least European audiences at the time appreciated it. This movie is an original IP, but it is inspired by Ridley Scott's 1977 film The Duelists, which is a movie about two men's uh, rivalry through the early 1800s, all through um, Napoleonic uh, Europe, loosely based on. Obviously, this rivalry involves more swords, immortality, Kurgans, this and the other. But still, behind the camera, this was produced by Peter S. Davis and William N. Panzer. Um, to get, they've done a few things together and. Not much when they work together. A disaster film called St. Helens and an early Joe Pesci film called The Death Collector. Oh, and a Rutger Howard film called The Osterman Weekend. And after that, almost exclusively Highlander stuff. Not really much to their credit. This was written by George Wyden initially. Then it went to Peter Bellwood and Larry Ferguson. Wyden uh, had wrote the script as a class assignment project when he was an undergraduate at UCLA, sold it for a decent amount of money. But then it went to Peter Bellwood and Larry Ferguson to kind of jazz it up, make it a little poppy, a little more 80s. Uh, The two of them had worked together on St. Helens before this, but they didn't work on anything together afterwards. And really, of them, Larry was the only one that did anything of worth. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2 and Hunt for Red October. Uh, Peter, he did, uh, he wrote Highlander 2. And then nothing else. Carrot. Kind of well, you gotta, when, when you write when you write magic, you just want to leave on that high, right? Yes, let's go with that. Let us go with that. So interesting writer choices, because again, neither of them had really done anything together beforehand. St. Helen's disaster film, kind of a BS one, and the director too, Russell Mulca- Mulcahy. Mulcahy. Yeah, Mulcahy. Mulcahy. Thank you, Nigel almost exclusively music videos up until this point. ACDC, Duran Duran, Elton John. He had a small smattering of films in his resume before this, but none of them really good. He did an Australian horror film called Razorback, which was essentially Jaws with a Warthog. And yet he was tapped to direct this. Uh, He would eventually go on to do decent things. Highlander 2, The Shadow... Resident Evil Extinction, and the Teen Wolf TV series. I thought you Uh, said decent things. Did I say decent? I meant bullshit things. He did The Shadow. We did establish that Highlander 2 is peak cinema, right? Um, We did. It was was some kind of magic. (laughs) Well, like, 
uh, bad magic. <laughs> like well, we said peak, we didn't say which peak. Broke out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, black magic is still magic. But speaking of magic, bringing some kind of magic to this in terms of music is Queen, who um, we have had heard their music on this podcast in another film, uh, Flash Gordon. And honestly, best their music was the movie. best part. Oh, you have a com- comment there, John? No, I was just going to say I stole your line because we said, I said that's the best part of that music or movie. The, the only good part of that movie. I'm sure Dan will have more comments about queen and the music choices that went into the film but honestly queen was mm, one of the things that really stands about out about this movie still talked about so that's behind the camera in front of the camera we have christopher lambert roxanne hart and returning faces clancy brown and sean connery i'm gonna just focus on chris clancy and sean as they're the ones with the most impact on the film nothing against roxanne hart um, but she really didn't do much before, during, or after this film. The protagonist, Christopher Lambert, plays Connor McLeod. Uh, he's a dramatic actor, mostly known for dramas. Uh, he mostly did French films before this. Uh, he's in the Academy Award winning film Chariots of Fire. But he got noticed in Greystroke, The Legend of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes, which was what got him onto this film which is weird because again you have a academy award winning film and that's the film that gets you noticed ever since then he's um he's just been mostly fire your agent levels of films um mortal Kombat, fortress ghost rider spirit of vengeance not much else after that as his sidekick is sean connery playing ramirez A performance actor who's done a touch of everything. Uh, We've touched on him before in more ways than one. Films he's been in on this series, Hunt for Red October and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Thankfully, none of these were the last time we'll see him. And I'm pretty sure this won't be the last time either. And finally, our antagonist, Clancy Brown as Ramirez. Another returning one. Is this... I'm trying to count my head. Huh? Mm-hmm. But did you catch that? No, what? what? He he just said oh, Clancy oh. Brown is returning as Ramirez. Oh, you're right. Oh, no, God. he's Kurgan. Oh my God! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was so excited that we we got. Uh, Sean I know when Connery you start talking back. about Sean Connery, man, you just want to you know, McLeod all over the place. Well, I, Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm having a quickening all up and down here. But Clancy Brown. Returning face playing Kurgan. I think this is a what a four Pete or a five Pete. I think he's our first five or no second five Pete, right behind Dennis Hopper. Was Hopper we had really him our... in uh, yeah. Pathfinder? We had him in Starship Troopers. We had him again in Shawshank Redemption, Buckaroo Banzai, and now Highland. Yeah, so five Pete. Clancy Brown, character actor, love all his stuff, character and performance. He's great in everything he is, just loves the scenery and loves chewing it up. So he's going to be a fun one. Definitely love seeing him coming back. In terms of drama and behind the scenes stuff, this, again, the producers were dicks and they kept trying to nickel and dime everything, which did not help especially considering the weather and everything else that went on that said the cast had such a fun time that they filmed a lot of additional scenes for free they loved that so that helped the production unfortunately it could not help it find an audience um as noted it was not well received in the u.s but it did gain a pretty persistent popularity in europe Since then, it's uh, generally well-received. Rotten Tomatoes' general consensus is that people hate Highlander because it's cheesy, bombastic, and absurd, and people love it for the same reasons. Uh, No awards, no Razzies, nothing else. Just one of those films that didn't find its audience until video and way too late. But I'm sure there's more about that in the trivia somewhere. So, Nigel, do you have trivia? I do. And speaking of some of the production woes of this um, movie, there were many. You were right about the um, nickel and diming, the production. Apparently, uh, 
when Sean Connery showed up for filming one, he filmed all of his scenes in a week because he, he was only available for a week. So he bet someone that, or someone bet him that you can't get it done in a week. And Sean Connery says, I bet I can get it done in six days. And they got it done in six days. Uh, <laughs> Truly Sean Connery yeah. is God. Yeah. Sean Connery was paid a million dollars for his week's worth of work. Um, Damn. Yeah, so that's great mm-hmm. job right there. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, but it wasn't all fun and games when Sean or, or when Connery was on set. Like I said, and they were nickel and diming the production. So when he was on set in Sean's films, he found out that the uh, director wasn't serving breakfast to the crew because he, that one, they didn't want to pay for it, and two, uh, they wanted to get started right away and didn't want to waste time having breakfast in the morning after one day of Sean Connery in the director's ear all day long. Breakfast was served to the crew for the rest of the shoot. Even after Sean Connery left, <laughs> like we're not going to risk this man's wrath coming back. My- when James Bond has a request, by God, you're going to film. Well, apparently the yes. cast, the cast got breakfast. The crew didn't get breakfast or something to that effect. I don't, I didn't catch the whole story, but uh, Connery was not pleased in any way, shape or form. And he never had a particular, um, reputation is quote unquote difficult to work with but connery did have a very peculiar way of doing things when he was on set of a movie so and and he just didn't like the fact they weren't feeding the crew breakfast in the morning so that stopped pretty quick after he showed up man of the people sean connery yeah also on sean connery apparently the kurgan was supposed to originally when they had the big the kurgan and, and connery's character ramirez have a fight in the movie when they fight kurgan was supposed to burst through the door and he cuts through a candle bra candelabra whatever not candle bra okay anyways candelabra candelabra okay whatever candelabra <laughs> i'm gonna say candle bra because now i'm got you know hot tits kind of in my head so do it do it <laughs> candle bra candle i'm gonna bra. go buy a candle bra and i shall set it on my mantle yeah candelabra anyways well the first take he did that he damn near decapitated sean connery for real and connery got so pissed and left the set and went right back to his like trailer and a couple of hours later uh clancy brown up went to sean connery and apologized but connery said hey you are in character it's fine. And then they never had a problem for the rest of the movie. And speaking of the Kurgan, Arnold Schwarzenegger was originally offered the part of the Kurgan multiple times, but he turned it down uh, more on Arnold Schwarzenegger in a couple of weeks. We'll see what roles he picked instead of Highlander. Speaking of next week's movie, Mortal Kombat, two of the main actors play the Mortal Kombat character Raiden. Clancy Brown provided Raiden's voice in the animated TV series Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm in 1995. And Christopher Lambert played Lord Raiden in the live action Mortal Kombat movie also came out in 1995. Yeah, I did not know that Clancy Brown was the voice of Raiden, but he's the voice of a lot of people. Mm hmm. Uh, I do have some of my fellow listeners that listen to the podcast are also wrestling fans. At the very beginning of the movie, Connor's watching a wrestling match. He was supposed to be watching a hockey match, match, but the NHL refused to allow footage or anything of their sport to be shown in the um, movie because the scene is supposed to be mixed with the wrestling match and flashbacks of Connor going into battle. So it's supposed to be like showing him coming full circle with, you know, warriors going off to battle and then warriors in battle today. Um, They were supposed to be highlighting the violence of hockey and the NHL absolutely refused to uh, let them use hockey footage because of that very reason. So instead, Connor sees a uh, wrestling match at uh, Madison Square Garden at the beginning of the movie, which is also quite popular in Madison Square Garden. It's actually the considered the home arena of the WWE. But th- the match that he's watching is uh, between the legendary AWA American Wrestling Association tag teams of the fabulous Freebirds consisting of Michael Hayes, Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts. And the tag team they're fighting is the team of Greg Gagne, son of AWA owner Vern Gagne, Jumping Jim Brunzel, the same Brunzel of the WWF tag team, the Killer Bees, friends of the channel who listen to OSW Review will know the Killer Bees, and the Tonga Kid. Uh, they were quite popular wrestlers back in the mid-80s when this uh, movie came out. And if speaking of professional wrestling, according to Hulk Hogan, he was offered the part of Connor McLeod, but he turned it down in order to focus on his wrestling career. Almost everyone involved in the film says that this is bupkis and no one offered uh, <laughs> Hogan any kind of scene or role in this film, especially the lead. But um, he still sticks to that story. Hogan offered himself the role. 
Yeah. <laughs> and he just was like, better believe it, brother, or whatever he says. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. But you better believe it, brother. But so, I can hear it. I can see it in my head. It's like, listen here, Kurgan. Yeah. I'm taking you to the Highlands of Scotland. <laughs> I'm taking you to Madison Square Garden. Right. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, that's Macho, Macho Man. Macho Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I guess. Oh, wait. That's yeah. There can be only one, brother. But um, I, I just, I mean, I see the movie roles that Hogan has taken in his career. I just don't think he was offered this. Suburban um, Commando. Yeah. You know. And speaking of people that were supposed to play Connor McLeod, Mel Gibson was offered the part of Connor McLeod. Uh, he turned it down multiple times. Uh, he went on to go do Lethal Weapons, so I'm pretty sure uh. he was okay there. But what's funny is he's he was offered the role of Connor, a Scottish Highlander, and later went on to act in and direct Braveheart, <laughs> where he basically played a Scottish Highlander. But so, very mortal in that one. Very, very mortal. mortal. Very, mortal. Very mortal. In that well, so far as we know, he did get his head cut off in the movie, so he could have been an immortal. But speaking of Lethal Weapon, coincidentally, Christopher Lambert was on the short list to play Martin Riggs in Lethal Weapon in 1987. But that part went to Mel Gibson. Kurt Russell was originally offered that part, who went on to go do Tango and Cash, the peak of this podcast. Because of Mel Gibson not being Connor McCloud, we got to watch Tango and Cash. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Yes. I'm still waiting for where Eric Stoltz was in. Uh, <laughs> you want to make a joke that apparently they filmed like half the movie with Chris with Eric Stoltz as Connor McCloud, and then eventually he was replaced with Christopher Lambert. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of I mean, my last little bits of trivia, speaking of Christopher Lambert, it was amazing that he was cast in this part and signed a contract and showed up on set, not speaking a word of English. Amazing. <laughs> so Lambert, he spoke French, I'm guessing. Yeah, he spoke French primarily and in a couple of other language, but uh, languages, but English was like his second or third language. He just he spoke it, but not very well. So, yeah, he worked with a vocal coach and he eventually developed. He could speak English very well, but he developed a very weird accent. But the director, Russell McKay, he actually really liked the accent because it made Connor sound like someone who's lived a very long time and lived in and even quotes this in the movie. Lots of different places. Hmm. So. Um, but yeah, Lambert speaks fine English now. I'm, and you know, he's obviously he did all the sequels and he did the tell he did a couple of episodes of the television show. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. Yeah, the movie was a bomb, it was um, not a box office smash, it kind of made its money back on direct to video or I mean video sales. Uh, but it did launch a franchise. Uh, the first was Highlander 2. The less said about that, the better. Um, mostly because and most of people's take on Highlander 2 isn't that it's a well, it is a bad film, but it wasn't so much the story was bad. It's just that this movie doesn't explain what the immortals are, where they come from, why they're immortal, why they have to fight um, or why they feel compelled to fight. It just says it is. And it just kind of treats it like magic. And the audience actually kind of appreciated that the, the mystery of the immortals never actually being explained and Highlander two explains it in the worst possible way. But the success of Highlander two in the box office, it did make some pretty decent money in the box office did lead to the creation of Highlander, the television series uh, starring Adrian Paul as Duncan McLeod, a fellow Klansman who was a couple hundred years younger than Connor McLeod. Uh, and that show lasted six seasons, uh, had pretty decent ratings considering it was in syndication for its entire run. That's actually pretty impressive. And um, most people say it was actually a pretty good show up until about season five or six. I love that show growing up. Yeah. And I actually thought uh, going back and looking at some of the episodes, we can pr preparation for this movie. It was actually kind of creative. They couldn't actually show heads being chopped off and stuff because of the television code. So they got around it and they got around it in pretty creative ways back in the day. So mm -hmm. And considering every episode had a fight and then a beheading, and they made that stretch for six seasons. Yes. 90s were a different time for television. Yeah, so that's all I've got today. Oh, wait, oh, no, I'm sorry. One more thing. Uh, Queen was actually only supposed to do one song for this movie. They got a rough cut of the film to kind of figure out which where they wanted to put their song. And I believe the only song they were supposed to do was the Who Wants to Live Forever, which is the love theme of the movie uh they watched the rough cut of the film and they they actually wrote like five or six more songs for the movie so that's why they ended up doing like the whole soundtrack but that's all i've got like i said i got more trivia that'll go on as the movie progresses um and we already know what the audience uh expects out of this film um or at least what they expected 
out of the sequel and they didn't get it. But Tom, what are your expectations for this film going in? I don't know. How long has it been since you've actually seen Highlander, the first movie? Oh my God. Uh, was it high school since the last time I've seen this? I can't honestly remember. And I can't honestly say I've seen the whole thing through. I've seen the beginning and I've seen the end, but there's chunks of the middle. I don't recall. So I can't say that I've seen this film all the way through, which is good because I Aside from the fights, I don't remember much about the film. So I'm practically going in blind. It's one of those films. We all know the score of this. Uh, it's it, the, the premise is just an excuse to see badass sword fights and hear badass queen music. I, I loved it the first time I saw it. Hell, again, I love the premise so much I saw it. Um, almost once a week, every week for six years. So my expectations are I'm probably going to enjoy this film. Um, sword fights. I love a good sword fight. And we've got Clancy Brown hamming it up as a bad guy. And we've got Sean Connery as an Egyptian Spaniard with a Scottish accent. <laughs> so that's I'm expecting that my opinion on this film isn't going to change as much from when I first saw it. I loved it then. At least I remember loving it. Uh, and I'm going to love it now. Uh, Nigel, what about you? Um, when was the last time you'd seen this film? What do you remember of it? And what are you hoping to get? Um, I actually saw this film maybe two years ago. And I actually saw it in a movie theater. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, here in Dayton. Nice. Uh, here in Dayton, Josh might know where it's at, but there used to be a movie theater um, in the uh, shopping center. That's uh, there. There was like a small grocery store, and um, I can't remember the name of the theater now. But uh, it's like called Beaver Valley Cinemas or something like that. But they were showing classic films, like they they weren't showing new Hollywood movies. They were showing classic films. And one day they were showing Highlander, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm gonna go see that because I've you know I I do have like this movie's a guilty pleasure of mine. I I do like this film, like Tom said, sword fights. Um, and what I like about this movie is the sword fights are kind of raw. They're not like overly choreographed at lightsaber duels, so to speak. They're like, you know, sword fights. And and I like the fact that the sword fights are kind of like, you know, you can tell that the fighters are careful with their swords because um, all it takes is the loss of your head. They, they can only kill each other by cutting off their heads. So other, you know, blows from swords are not typically done in the fights, which is cool. But I saw this in the theater and it was like, I don't know, two, three years ago. And like I said, I enjoyed it. I do agree with most people that the television show is a little bit better because it it fleshes out what the immortals are without full on explaining what the mortal the immortals are. Whereas Highlander 2 answered that question. And like I said, the worst three, they actually answered that question three times and all three answers were terrible. There was the theatrical cut. Then there was like the renegade or the director's cut, which which changed them to something else. Then there was like the renegade cut, which blended the two answers together. And all three were unsatisfactory. But like I said, we're not watching Highlander 2 tonight. Thank God. Uh, we're watching Highlander 1. And so I think my expectations are pretty high. I I, I do like this film. It, it, it's it's a kind of magic. And like I said, it, it's the like I said, the movie really does explain itself pretty well. It's a kind of magic. But uh, Josh, what about you? Have you ever seen Highlander 1? Uh, yes, um, I have seen it. I've seen it all the way through, but it's uh, it's been at least 20 years. I remember watching it at my the house I grew up in in Kansas. So it was obviously the highlight of that decade. <laughs> um, but I, okay, it's, it's one of those things. I remember thoroughly enjoying it and really liking it. But at the same time, I haven't seen it in 20 years. Like I remember watching Jurassic Park in theaters and absolutely loving that movie. And I've seen it probably every year since um i liked that i liked highlander i remember liking highlander I, I would have to say going into this one i'm gonna have be a little cautiously optimistic because again i haven't seen it um and i'm wondering if it's going to be different through adult eyes i'm hoping it's not i really hope that it lives up to my nostalgic memories of it but at the same time i'm not i'm not I, I don't know if it will or not i've just i feel like that we've ran into situations like this in the past and i don't want to 
Like, I hope we come out of this movie, and I really hope that I like it. But I'm expecting it to be good, but not great. I'm, I'm not expecting it to live up to the nostalgia. You think it's going to be more of a middle kind of film? Above average. I'm hoping it'll be above average. Especially considering the box office run. Of course, let me go back and take a look. When that came out, it was... You know, it premiered in over a thousand theaters. So, it's not like it... Um, What's the word I'm looking for, you know? It wasn't like a tiny release. Yeah, it was like it's definitely a wide release, especially for the 80s. Like, I'm just hoping that I come out of there enjoying the film. And it may have a little nostalgia fuel behind it, you know? Like, the way you guys were all about uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You guys definitely had some reverence for that film. Whereas I came out of that movie like, that's a good movie. I really enjoyed it, but I didn't have that level of reverence for it. Mm -hmm. If the nostalgia trip hits and I remember having a reference for this film, I would be okay with that. It's definitely not going to be Tango and Cash. Oh, well, that again, we've mentioned before. Well, this also isn't the same. Yeah, and this also isn't the same kind of movie that Tango and Cash was. That was just like Tango and Cash is more comparable to uh, Jesus. Yeah, we know. (laughs) (laughs) If Jesus had a badass Mm. SUV with a chain gun mounted to the side, yes. (sighs) Ah. What are you hoping it's at least better than? I mean, is there another film you're expecting it to be? Because I'm definitely thinking it's going to be better than, say, 21 Bridges. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping it'll be better than 21 Bridges. I just I, want it to be better than Buckaroo Lord, I hope Banzai. it's better than Buckaroo Banzai. I'm still having PTSD about that movie. I still don't know if I didn't like it, though. It's like I acknowledge it was a bad movie, but did I like it? I'm still having issues with coming to terms with that thing. It's, it's an experience. More yeah. than a film. Yeah. Yes. That's a movie that I will watch again, but only to watch with somebody who hasn't seen it before. And I won't be watching the movie. I will be watching their f- expressions the entire time. <laughs> I mean, that's the one thing I missed when we were watching Buckaroo Banzai is we weren't like Skyping or video chatting. So I couldn't just see your looks of bewilderment at the everything going on. It really was a film of the eighties by the eighties and for I don't I don't know who it's for yet either. Yeah, it's to, to the, the, the creatures from the eighth dimension. Yes. But back to Highlander. I, I think the only thing I'm worried about with this film, it is I, I have a more I have more of an appreciation for slower films. Um longer takes, ones that build a story, get to know the characters. This one was directed by a music video director so a little snappier more focus on fighting and such so maybe i'll have a more cynical oh it has been a while since you've seen this movie isn't it it has uh, again since high school maybe and even then Mm. um yeah the movie the movie does a lot more build up of connor in the past and building up connor's like re- not relationship but connor's like view of life now as they're living for so long then you probably remember but i don't want to spoil too much no, no i appreciate you not spoiling oh that does give me a little more hope again we've seen so yeah, many i films don't remember like the film being again 20 years so grain of salt i don't remember the film being too action-packed i remember it having good action but i don't remember it being too action-packed okay like okay. I, all the scenes that i'm remembering and i'm running through in my head are like slow build-up scenes like mm-hmm. him chilling out in his loft, looking at old relics, yeah. Um, running through a parking garage, some of the Scotland stuff. Yeah, there's also only like I think four sword fights in the entire film. Yeah, I'm not. Re- I'm not. Wow. I don't remember it being too action packed. Yeah. Okay. Oh, again, we, I see music video director, and I think back to some of the other films we've seen on this podcast, The Mummy. Um, God, there've been so many other films where it's just you have that kind of modern ADD focus on how you're going to make the films. Like we, we can't give them a chance to stop to think about what's going on. They'll start asking questions. We got to go guys. Uh, Another Mm -hmm. action scene explosion. Tom Cruise is fighting a mummy for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, keep in mind, this movie was also released in the eighties. Seems to be a running trend for us. It is. We have been, uh, we have been uh, lingering in the eighties a bit. We have, we? we have, but you know, that's our demographic. So, 40 year olds <laughs> but uh yeah it's like i totally lost my train of thought see i did it to you i i pulled a I pulled a mummy it's like don't oh, don't think oh it's that's action. right that's right <laughs> I, I thought about it for too long and i stumbled no this was a film made in the 80s so i 
um, don't think that they had as much boardroom like uh, influence. Like I think the back in the eighties, I think it was commonplace for the board to have obviously influence, but more influence in the budgetary aspect of making the movies. Like, okay, well, uh, you're behind schedule, so we're just going to go ahead and cut your budget. <laughs> Whereas uh, modern day wants to be like, well, we need Superman in the sequel. Mm-hmm, or we need mm-hmm. Batman in the sequel. So you're going to do that now. Oh, and uh, we need Batman to be first on the title card. And you have to have justice in the title, too. I think that's more modern type stuff. And when board members realize that they could actually influence the storytelling of the movie is when ADD infused action role became more common. I'd have to look more into some of these other films from the 80s because I want to say that that really started to pick up that decade, but I haven't really looked that far back in the meta. I'm curious. but I'm just thinking back to past films mm-hmm. and other things that I've read about. Um, especially looking at just gener- generic or general Hollywood trends, that seems to be a very because I mean, even into the 90s, you, you like mm-hmm. you start seeing more and more. Um, that it definitely starts building up more, and in, in the double odds, it just like sprinted, yeah, yeah, especially once- for main blockbuster films. I blame Transformers, that's probably where it fully started, at least that's where it like matured. That's where I think someone stopped watching the dog and it just got out of the yard and no, no one's ever been able to catch it. Yeah, um, I like the. I, I think it started way before then, but yeah, you're you're not. Well, yeah, wrong I think I, I, it definitely started before then. We mm-hmm. did have Blade Trinity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, thank you for reminding me of uh, where the bottom was before. We <laughs> yeah, <started>. you're <laughs> welcome. Uh. God. You know, so uh, I guess since we kind of all know or we're, getting, we're thinking we're going to get out of this film, doesn't somebody have some thoughts on what other people got out of this film? I can give you one guess on who it's not. It's not Josh. It hasn't been Josh in almost a month. Dude, <laughs> I hit a perfect, I almost hit a perfect game. And that was just like all of my luck for the rest of the year, which, you know, honestly, it's it's cool. That's cool. Don't worry, Josh. Don't worry. I'll... Make sure that this quiz section goes just as well for you as the past ones have. Because it's my turn, baby. I'm the quiz master. Pause for applause. No, no, please. You, yo, yo. You're embarrassing me now. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. But, gentlemen, standard rules apply. I have scoured the deepest, darkest corners of... IMDB for only the choicest of user reviews because some people have seen this film and some people have had some things to say about it and we get to guess what they had to say so I have five reviews from one to ten stars I will give you the review you will guess how many stars you think that review is Person that gets closest without going over wins a point. If you get exactly on the money, you get two points. Um, those that do get over, say you're about the same no, distance. Yeah, only if you're same distance apart does the going over affect it. You go with the one that's below it if you're the exact same distance apart. But if four the rounds. answer is five, somebody picks four and another person picks eight. Josh, who who won the quiz this time? Who, who is, who's I know the rules. It- that's how I know to avoid them. I mean, shit. Quiet part loud again. (laughs) Well, since Josh knows the rules of this quiz so well, I'm going to let him go first. God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) So, Josh, are you ready? As I'll ever be, Thompson. All right. So this review comes from I on the Pie in the Sky, who writes... Grown men wielding gold-hilted swords, a seven-foot Russian screaming like Jamie Lee Curtis, and Sean Connery dressed in peacock feathers. Hmm, not quite gay enough. How about we dredge the thing in music from the band Queen? Perfect. (laughs) I love this review. (laughs) (laughs) You might. It started with the name. I really like the guy's uh, username, and then that review is just choice. I'm going to say 7 out of 10. All right, Nigel? I'm going to say a 9. 
Gosh is closest. This is a one star Jesus review. Jesus Christ. Right? <laughs> right? Right? It's like, I don't know how you feel about this guy, but I think you got the scoring system wrong. He meant to put 10, he just forgot the second digit. <laughs> Well, not Josh, you are on the board with one. I got scored first last week, too. And I think the week before that. And then the week before that. I'm noticing a trend. Well, we'll see if this trend continues. Nigel, the second one is to you. This one comes from Ian Mightlandix13. Some of these names, I swear to Judas. They write... Christopher Lambert's accent sounds exactly like Tommy Wiseau's from The Room, which unfortunately validates Tommy's acting more than it deserves. Jesus. Uh, I'm going to go three this time. Josh. Jesus Christ, two. <laughs> Dan is closest. That was a five-star review. Good job, Dan. <laughs> We're tied. Yeah, yeah, I didn't quite know what to take of that review either, but it's a review. Okay. I legitimately Josh. thought that was lower than a three, but okay. Well, maybe you'll get more luck on this one from Quinoa 1984. Josh, this goes to you. The title of their review is Is this a good movie? No. Is it completely nonsensical fun? Hell yeah. I'm gonna go with an eight. Nigel? I'm gonna go with a seven. Nigel's closest. This is a six-star review. Mm, nice. I almost said six, too. Wow. Yeah, you could have caught it, but you didn't. No, I didn't. But maybe you'll get this next one. This one comes from McFrog. The title of the review, and I apologize to everyone, Christopher Lambert can't be killed? <laughs> K-I-L-T. Christopher Lambert can't be killed killed. Is there a question mark or anything, or period? It's just a period. Okay. Dan, this is to you. Um, I'm going to give them a negative 55 for that horrible pun. Um, is that really the review? It just says Christopher Lambert can't be killed? It's the title of the review. This is deceiving. I'm saying a 7. Josh? I'm just gonna go balls to the wall. It's a 10. Nigel's closest. This is a 2 star review. Jesus <laughs> lord. So, so far, Dan is winning, but Josh can still tie it up with this one. This is the last question, unless, again, Josh ties it. This one, Josh, comes from David, who says, Apparently this film was let down by its sequels. No, it was let down by the fact it was crap. Um, three. <laughs> Nigel? Four. Josh was closest on that one. That was a one-star review. So I almost said one, but you'd already had a one-star review. <laughs> I thought I'd change it up a bit and just uh, throw you a curve. So with three out of two, Dan wins this one. Um, do you want to hear the tiebreaker? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Dan, I think this would go to you. This one comes from CJ Baker 45009. The title of their review, Only in 1986 Will You See a Frenchman Play a Scot and a Scot Play an Egyptian. Five. Josh? Yes. Wait, shit. Ten. I don't care. <laughs> Josh would have got that Well, It was a nine-star review. But, Nigel, congratulations. You've won the quiz, which means you can do the quiz next week. Oh, for fuck's sake, Tom, play the music. Welcome back to another immortal episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and Highlander, Tom. Yeah, things just aren't the same as they used to be. Back in my day, it used to take 15 days by donkey to get to school. And that's if one of you didn't get the plague along the way. And when we got there, we had to turn right back around because wouldn't you know it, they hadn't invented school yet. Those were the days. 
But thank you for spending your days with us here at the Fire Pit. It's vacation determination here, and the team has packed up the beach towels and the swords for their trip to Terminator 2, Judgment Day. In the end, there can be only one destination, but there's plenty of room for everyone once we get there. And speaking of room, let's see if the team finally found room for their final epic battle. Okay, okay. Now we've all got weapons, and we're far away from the church. We shall battle to the death. But all I have is this old stick you found on the ground. And this is a broken... What, bicycle? Wheel? What, what was this supposed to be? This all seems to be weighted in Dame Peggy's favor. <laughs> I'm tired of this. Which of you will be first? How about me? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! He killed Peggy! Who are you? Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez Conry. I am the original immortal. Ah, do you feel that? Feel the quickening. Oh. Gross. How about you, sir? Ah, my arm! Oh my god! I'm out. Wait, you can't leave! This is a- No, wait! He's leaving. My arm, my arm, my arm! I mean, look at it like a holy shit! I mean, wait. Will it grow back? Honestly, I'm... Uh, I've been out this a long time. I'm, I've never lost an appendage. Yes, I'm that good. Uh, but I don't know. Will it grow back? I want to see. I... but... No, no, wait, 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 no, 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 no. I want to see this too. Fine. Look, since this is going to be a while, does anyone mind if I get some Pokemon Go in? I noticed a gym just, like, not too far away. Goddamn Dynamax. <clears throat> ah, I was wondering if they'd find a way to fit a Sean Connery cameo into their skit. Nice! But if you have an ad that you'd want to cameo on an episode, or if you have a movie that you think deserves more than just a cameo, or if you have some thoughts about other guests that should cameo on the podcast that you'd like to share privately, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line, as well as the purpose of your email. Whether it's to pay for an ad, send a movie request, clear up something that we brought up in a past episode, or if you just want to sharpen your rapier wit on us, and send it our way. From there, we'll read it, send it through the highlands of Scotland, let it pass through the annals of time to the final days of the gathering, and never respond. Why would we respond to an email while we're fighting for our lives? That's just a silly expectation. You know better than that. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. That sensation I haven't felt for a hundred years must mean... And it's time to get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. So, a quick introduction for the audience for our watch-along. Uh, we've invited Peggy, the OG friend of the channel, to join us tonight uh, as we watch the... 1986 classic Highlander. But first, we get to watch some classic old school wrestling. The fabulous Freebirds, ladies and gentlemen. Was that a Confederate flag? Canceled. No, that's okay. That's okay. They're the heels. Everyone's yeah. booing them. Yeah, yeah. The, the Freebirds were very rarely faces, so yeah. yeah. It's okay. No one else likes them either. Oh, okay, okay. From the dawn of time we came. No one has ever known we were among you until now. Hang on, let me flush. 
<laughs> yeah, he recorded all that while in a toilet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He uh, he was in Spain. He was in Spain. He recorded it in a Spanish bathroom. And that's why. And then, but they actually liked the echo effect, so they didn't bother to try to fix it. As we like to call it, poo acoustics. John Connery can multitask. He can do one thing. We wait for the time of the uh, uh, gathering. <laughs> ah, plate glass on cars. I miss the 80s. You know, when you got into a car accident, you died like a man. None of this airbag safety bullshit. I think we're remembering a different 80s. <laughs> Are you scared, Connor? No, Cousin Google. I'm not. Don't talk nonsense, man. I peed my kilt the first time I went into battle. Longest bees is cool all the time. <laughs> yeah, he's got a bladder issue. <laughs> uh, we think he's infected. <laughs> they didn't have a cure for that back then. He just turned 40. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want to know what animal skull he's wearing on his head. Props department mostly. <laughs> he's they design like... it, then they turn it into armor. Oh, you mean in universe? <laughs> <laughs> Smart ass. Fight me, that room. Fight me, you coward. Oh my God, he does sound like Tommy Wiseau. Oh, you got Toledo Salamanca. You'll probably get for 20 bucks at any pawn shop in Brooklyn, though. It's worth $1 million. It's 500 years old, and the steel has been folded 10,000 times. Best I can do is 20. Do you think immortals get STDs? Yes. (laughs) All of them. They're like non-symptomatic carriers, so they've got like all of them, but they'll never know. Yeah, so he banged this chick, and that started the uh, AIDS uh, pandemic in the 80s. Because mm-hmm. you didn't wear a mask, dickhead. <laughs> I, I was going to make a condom joke, but I'm, I'm just I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> You've seen too much. Yeah, when it comes to witnesses, there can be only none. <laughs> you have the manners of a goat, and you smell like a duck. And you have no knowledge whatsoever of your potential. It doesn't matter if Sean Connery is playing a Egyptian... Or a Spaniard, or a Russian nuclear submarine captain. It's the same accent in every film. If I could verify the existence of such a weapon, it would be like, discovered 747 of passengers and the white brothers in a flu. This is crazy. You know your swords, lady. You must sword around a lot. I'm kind of turned on. on. (laughs) Don't do it. Don't. Come on, Josh. Don't do it. Just do it, Josh. She wants to play with his sword. There you go. There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, she went from like loving him to being just fucking batshit crazy in like seconds. Like, oh god. Oh, she's a redhead. It's oh. <laughs> that's just how they are. Who had random Mennonites on their uh, bingo card? That would be me. Oh, you would have been an awful mom. <laughs> Wait, shit, I said the loud part quiet, the quiet part loud again. Must be uh, Heather's birthday. He's lighting a candle for her. Aw, you remembered what happened ten minutes ago in the movie. (laughs) I didn't. Why are you leaving the high ground? Are you called a lowlander? (laughs) Lowlander. Ah, boo. Titty! Boobs. Go away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! Oh, wait, now oh, she's on the floor. Oh my god! I forgot about that part. <laughs> Didn't have that one on my bingo card either. <laughs> I had, I had crazy lady on hood. So you enjoying this the movie so far, Peggy? Oh yeah, this is a good movie. <laughs> really? I had... are we watching the same movie? <laughs> Oh, this is where all the windows blow out. Bad asses don't look at explosions. Oh, the glass in my back! Oh, God! You're getting your quickening all over me. (laughs) You're getting your quickening all over me. And there were never any other Highlander movies again. Nope. This is the only one. There can be only one. Hey! And now, back to the episode. All right, well, that was Highlander. So, 
I think. Was it? What? Was it really? What? What happened? What? what it it was do? something. But I think that uh, thing is, we have a guest. We should let her go ahead and go give her final thoughts first. So, Peggy, for OG <laughs> friend of the channel, Peggy. <laughs> okay. I don't want to go first. I'm a virgin. Oh, I thought you were having a quickening. I was like <laughs> really concerned. Final thoughts. Uh, oh man, I don't know what to say. Um, I guess it's got me speechless. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I it's the same movie I remember from when I was a kid watching it. Uh, it has its moments. You gotta love. Uh, Kurgan, uh, and ironically, I cannot remember seeing the other Highlander movies, so I guess that makes this one the one. The only one? <laughs> I know I've seen the other ones, but lord if I can remember anything about them, so that should tell you something right Most there. people don't, other than the fact that they sucked. Yeah, that's pretty much all I remember, so. You remember the TV show? How does this, how does this stack against the TV show? Uh, Adrian Paul is far sexier. Well, <laughs> I mean, he had that 90s um, uh, ponytail, so... Yeah, the straight hair. Mm. <laughs> he was a little bit more buff, too. But, he was also yeah. a better sword fighter. Like, they definitely did a lot more choreography with the sword fighting. In the, uh, in uh, yeah, show. you can tell he had a little more training. And his girlfriend was hotter, Tessa. Oh, yes. She was, and she had that French accent. Mm-hmm. But I didn't like Richie, so... But there were no Richies in this movie. No Richies. Lots of lots of uh, that the reporter girl. What was her name? I can't see. I can't even remember the name of the girl. What does that tell you about the movie? <laughs> Brenda. Brenda's her name. Brenda. Brenda. Oh, that's such an '80s name, isn't it? I mean, who's named Brenda anymore? <laughs> to all of our listeners, named Brenda, you can direct <laughs> your comments to Peggy. <laughs> As you work your jobs in HR. <laughs> <sighs> As you work your jobs, <laughs> Brenda. That's okay. I have a cousin, Brenda, and a an, uh, sister, Brenda, or not a sister, uh, like a half sister. So I have my share of Brendas in my life. I don't think they listen to this podcast, though. And they work in HR. <laughs> <laughs> so, any uh, th- were there any other like particular characters or parts of the movie that kind of just stick out for you, or just like parts you have like a fondness for, or? guilty pleasure about or something well my guilty pleasure i have to say i've always like when i saw this as a kid i was just fascinated with the whole walking underwater and not drowning thing because i just i love water i'm a water baby i love to go swimming and it was just the idea of being able to like just walk down on the bottom of the lake somewhere and just see all the fishes and everything i i just thought that would be the coolest thing ever screw sword fight screw being immortal let me walk underwater, you know, not on water. Don't need to walk on water. Somebody else has done that quite well. <laughs> so, Tom. Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> That's who she's talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. totally. Always. Um, I don't know. I, to me, the, the final scene, the big epic uh, scene up on the rooftop is probably the, the best fight scene of all the fight scenes. Um, there's just something about how they use the uh, set, I guess, for lack of a better term, compared to the other ones. Just, it it has that bigness, that that feeling of this is the big important fight compared to the other ones. And you gotta love shots of electricity and water and girl screaming and yeah. Cool. So (laughs) did you, did you, so you enjoyed it then? Oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. I, 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 every time I see this movie, I, I enjoy it. <laughs> see it through new eyes as well. Cool. Nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you have any additional thoughts before uh, we send it on over to the next one on the list? Uh, not really. I guess uh, thanks for having me. It's kind of nice to uh, come back and uh, see y'all again or hear y'all. <laughs> ah, cool. Nice to have you too. And thanks. For yeah. Having- Thanks. I mean, we're not done talking to you, obviously. Yeah, well, yeah, we're not done. We're, we uh, we we'll, we each do. We each spend a minute or two on the film, and then we'll do a, like a, yeah. a group discussion of the final on, on final thoughts as well. I mean, yeah, you've you've listened to the show, so I have, um, I have. I'm a little bit behind on my episodes, but I I have listened, so that's all right. I haven't done all my homework, I guess. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Well, um, 
Josh, what about you? Final thoughts? Well, having not seen this movie in 20 years, never seen the series, saw the one fan fiction they turned into a movie, <laughs> I have to say that I'd have to give this movie a big solid meh. I was not overly impressed with it. Um, it wasn't terrible, but it was definitely all my memories were nostalgia fueled. So it's about exactly where you were expecting. A little below expectations. I was hoping to enjoy it more than I did. Like, I can see the movie that I enjoyed. But rewatching it now through adult eyes, I'm just like, scenes progress a lot faster. There is some character progression, but not a lot. Some of the effects are like, okay. The acting is okay. Obviously, uh, Clancy Brown is the best. Hell, even some of Sean Connery's lines felt a little wooden. And the whole montage scene, I'm just like, there was no sense of time in that. And like, I felt those fight scenes were just like, Maybe I've been spoiled, but I would say that the fight scenes in uh, The Force Awakens was better. But yeah, beyond that, I think some of the set design was cool. That one scene where the Kurgan broke into What's-Her-Face's apartment, that looked like a music video. Like, I, I, I get what you had said about that, Dan, about it being kind of like filling the mood or whatever. But it felt incredibly out of place and it completely took me out of the moment. Hmm. I'm like, this seems incredibly fabricated. Some of the high scenes and the faraway uh, shots were really cool. I will admit that. But some of the other ones, it's like he put the camera on a tripod, turned it on and left the room for a few hours while they shot the film. It's like, okay. <laughs> he came back from lunch. Like, Did we get it? Everybody's like, oh shit, we were rolling. But beyond that, I would just have to say, just didn't overly impress me. Would I watch this again? Probably uh, with greater frequency than shows like Blade Runner. But overall, I'd have to give it a meh rating. What about you, Dan? Um, I, I, I don't know. I I like this one. I, I really do like this movie. I, I watched it. And like I said, I watched it when I was a kid. I remember the, the show was in its first season or two. And I watched the show all the time. I wouldn't miss it. But uh, I remember it was on at like 11 o'clock on uh, Saturday nights. <laughs> but uh, so I would watch the show and I saw the part of this movie on TV. It was like a TV movie and I saw part of it, but I got it at the video store and I watched the movie and I liked it as a kid. I still kind of like it as an adult. I can, I can see where it's a little bit of a weaker film. I will say this, this movie is one of those cult classic films or cult following movies we've watched on this channel. This is the only one that we've watched. That's considered a cult classic that I can see why it has a huge following. When we watch flash Gordon, I'm like, who the hell likes this? Okay, I take that back. This and Blade Runner are the only two cult movies that I can see why people like. Like, I can see why this one has fans. Like, you know, this one, Blade Runner, and oh, even um, It. But like, fl we watch Flash Gordon. That's considered a cult classic or a cult. Fo that movie has a big cult following. And then you watch Flash Gordon. You're like, the hell? Who the hell likes this that's not on drugs? Nighthawks was another film. It's like... Guys, 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 this movie's boring as hell. Like, how does anyone like this? You know, and there was nothing about Nighthawks and even Flash Gordon to me that stood out that that would make it why you want to invest more into those films or, uh, and into that world. Whereas like Blade Runner had this whole universe that they set up in the movie that really gets you interested. So, uh, it had the setting of that uh, that isolation in the Antarctic that was just like awesome, you know, a setting to have a film and in this one does have like i know they went on to kind of sort of try to explain it in the sequels and they failed miserably but the whole mystery of what the immortals are who they are why they're compelled to fight each other why even evil immortals like kurgan abide by the rule of no fighting on holy ground i i i like that i like the fact that they set up this universe that you know they wanted you know that you would kind of want to explore a little bit more of um, and it's so unfortunate that the sequels really dropped the ball on that. But also I contend that while the TV series is good, this is a movie that didn't need a sequel. It had a good story from beginning to end and the end was pretty definitive. So I don't even really think it needed a sequel, but Josh, I can kind of see what you're saying about some of the, like the montage. You're right. There's almost no sense of time. Like did Ramirez spend a couple of years with him? Did he spend a couple of months with him? Did he spend a couple of days with him? It doesn't really tell you how long Ramirez spent with Connor and Heather while he was training Connor. Like there's really no sense of time. And, and they also don't even show the seasons changing in those scenes. So like you said, you really don't know how long he spent. It could have been days, months, years, a couple of hours. We don't know. 
so I, I can see that. But I liked some of the quote unquote music video shots, like when he during the montage scene when they were doing the sword fight and the the helicopter camera was sweeping around the mountain and and doing a three hundred and sixty around him, like that. Oh yeah, that was definitely cool. That was a music video shot uh, to me when Kurgan was breaking into her apartment and the the camera was going down the hallway. That's a complete music video shot, especially an eighties music video shot. You know, so like I like some of the music video shots, but. Uh, like I said, I can see why some of them took you out of the film. And maybe it's because I have nostalgic reverence, not reverence, but nostalgia feelings for the film that I'm kind of a little more forgiving on some of it. But yeah, I still kind of enjoyed it. What about you, Tom, before I continue to ramble? Um, <laughs> hmm, where do I stand on this? I'm definitely on Josh's side of this. It is not aged well for me. Some of the stuff that I was like, wow, this is really cool when I was a kid and really emotional just did not resonate. And I think I noticed finally there's really no story to this movie. It's just a guy who's going to fight this one guy he knew way long ago and who was obsessed with him and then disappeared and now they're just going to be fighting there wasn't a lot of weight to it there wasn't a lot of stakes there was a whole you know the quickening the you know if he gets this he's going to destroy the world or whatever but it was too big and at the same time not big enough to really fit it just was a reason why are these people going to be sword fighting because mm-hmm. The flashbacks didn't even add to it, with the exception of the stuff with his first wife. Like uh, when he meets the guy on the bridge, like, yeah, that one time when you got drunk and had the duel and it showed Connor getting stabbed by the British Lord, which, by the way, you notice the guy he's talking to on the bridge, not in that scene. Mm -hmm. He's he's not there at the duel. Yeah, he's not even there. So he's like, remember that one thing that happened to you that I wasn't there for? Yeah, apparently that scene was supposed to be longer and it was cut. He's actually in that flashback. He's at the party where Connor insulted the guy's wife and got challenged to the duel. Uh, but they, they they cut the scene and they were going to restore it in like a director's cut or something later on. And it got lost in a fire. Well, that's what yeah. they say. We, we had this. We totally did our homework, teacher. It just got lost in a fire. So for that sort of stuff, it didn't add anything and maybe it's because i am comparing contrasting to the tv show which did a lot of stuff that this did but better the story beats the flashbacks had emotional resonance uh with whatever was happening in that episode like the person you're meeting or the immortal he's gotta beat or the event that kind of parallels the event happening in that episode this one again it was window dressing and the whole bit with kurgan that's another thing i didn't get about the story kurgan was absolutely obsessed with mcleod in the beginning and then he kills ramirez and then just goes away he does know that mcleod is still out there he can sense him He just needs to wait a little bit longer. It's not like he fell down the mountain and got trapped in a cave that collapsed and has been there for how long. He goes away because we don't need him anymore. I know we need to meet in New York, but come on. Yeah, I'll I'll add to your thought here in a minute, but keep going. And like I said, some of the things that had emotional resonance for me when I first saw it, like his wife getting old and dying, in his arms that had a lot more resonance the first time i saw it but that could also be because lambert's acting was um maybe not as solid i i blame the accent english was not his first language and was barely his second by the time they filmed this so a lot of that didn't quite come off his his, his emotions literally get lost in translation in a lot of scenes yes so that one and maybe it's just a version we did watch because I remember there were being a few more shots of her just showing her gradually. Like you see her young, then slightly older, then noticeably older. And then there's that scene we do see like near the end before the final one where he's calling out to her. And then you see her coming up and she's old. Yeah. And so maybe that 
the, we, the version we got didn't have that more gradual build that I remember. But then again, I could be remembering it wrong. So I've got some additional thoughts, and uh, but I'll add that to um, our group discussion, which I think since I'm the last one, we can start in on. But yeah, no, this... Yeah, I didn't really like this film. I'm not going to say I hated it because it did have some cool stuff here and there. Yeah, it had some uh, endearing qualities to it. And I think that's what kept me from... Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, to put it into perspective, this movie was released a year after Back to the Future. And it had a budget $2 million less than Back to the Future. Which one's more timeless, do you think? Oh, Back to the Future, for sure. Back to the Future, absolutely, yes. But Back to the Future has a perfect storm, too. It's better acting, better directing, better score. Um, This movie movie (laughs) didn't have have a whole lot of that going for it. Like Tom said, Christopher Lambert's accent or his delivery of some of his lines. I know the director really liked his accent, and he, he the director was right. Lambert really does sound like someone who comes from lots of different places because he can't get the freaking accent down pat from one scene to the next. Hell, from one sentence to the next in some scenes, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. which does kind of add to him being 400 plus years old. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think the flashbacks post Heather like he had a World War II flashback and he had another flashback where he's in uh, the 1700s and I know they had other flashbacks filmed but they didn't use them I thought some of these the flashbacks might have been a little bit better suited if they would have showed the Kurgan in those flashbacks as well and even if they don't fight in those flashbacks just kind of build to the audience that it's destiny that these two will be the last two and will fight mm-hmm like, like throughout the hundreds of years, they always seem to find each other. Yeah, they're little, they're they're ships passing in the night. You know, they they they're constantly like they're well, uh, no pun intended, but they're on a razor's edge. They're always so close to fighting, and they don't they don't mm-hmm. fight. So it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until you finally get the payoff match, which is what we call it in wrestling. You get the payoff or the blow off match, which is the very end of the the movie when they have their big sword fight. Just kind of like and build up that um it's gonna it's always gonna be these two these two are gonna be the final two Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that would have been a little bit better i also i think that the other two immortals that are in the movie well not counting ramirez the other two the one he kills at the beginning fossil and the one that kurgan kills midway through the movie um uh castagir um they should have been in some flashbacks too like they really should have built up the fact that these guys are the last ones. The gathering is here and there's only Mm. five immortals left, you know, or Mm -hmm. four immortals left. Like they really should have done a little bit more building up. That's yeah. The movie, like I feel like it it was mostly told in flashback, but Mm -hmm. if you look at just sheer percentages, but I feel like honestly, you could have kept the uh, current time frame a lot thinner, a lot lighter and s- mostly told the story in flashbacks. Like, I honestly think that would have been a much better film, Dan, is having them go through history and then, like, even not necessarily crossing in the night, but just showing flashbacks of the Kurgan tearing his way through various aspects, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, like, the one uh, battle where he saved uh, Rachel from the Nazi. Um, you also show at the same battle um, the Kurgan, Nazi. you know, slaughtering allies or something. Yeah, or maybe even not even on that front, like show Kurgan in the Pacific front, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or parallel. Well, that's another thing. I guess the first draft of the script, the original one um, that they submitted, this one obviously got 85 and all to make it wilder. But there was going to be a lot more kind of of that and just more personality progression, too. That's another thing. And because I know this, I was watching um um yeah clancy brown's character here he wasn't supposed to stay that static monster he was supposed to be a whole different personality by their final fight because for him the years also took his toll so at the end he wasn't going to be like biker guy he was going to be in a business suit and with a hat and kind of just like thousand yard stairs just ready to be done with it yeah because like connor he had also lived through time and had lovers and friends that have grown old and died and he's lost literally everybody he ever cared about so by the time they get to their final duel it's almost like you know who really wants this prize it's kind of like when we do trivia 
Nobody <laughs> wants to win. <laughs> is it the quiz? Who's got the quiz today? <laughs> uh, it's me. Yeah. yeah, it's like the quiz. Nobody wants to win this by now. Um, <laughs> I know. I think it would have felt like a lot. You know, that would have been a good twist on the Kurgan. Have mm-hmm. him like start off as this really menacing, um, monotone, <clears throat> uh, monologuing uh, villain basically the Kurgan we got at the beginning, but at the end, he's kind of a more lighthearted, personable, smiling bad guy yeah, in a business. They, suit. I think that would have been, that would have shown character progression. Cause the Kurgan we got did not change from the beginning of the film to the end of the film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now that's just a trope of the eighties. Like you don't care about character development, your villains, but mm-hmm. I think he, he was a cartoon character. He was a cartoon, he was a cartoon yeah. character. Exactly. It, they actually took the original concept of the Kurgan and made him a, uh, arc villain. Uh, in the Highlander series, oh, uh, in, yeah, season three or four, uh, you, there's a like a, a an immortal that's like thousands of years old, like almost two thousand years old, who was one of the four horsemen, so to speak. You oh, know, Mythos! It, no, no, yeah. no. Myth, Myth, Mythos was a good guy, but there was another one that rode with Mythos that was a bad guy that was the horseman of war or the horseman mm-hmm. of death, I think. And, oh, Metatron. Yeah, and he was really bad, really bad. And then he was still a bad guy by the time they get to the modern times, but he was a much more mellow person. Like when they show him in flashbacks in the past of like a thousand years ago fighting Romans or whatever, he's a freaking monster like the Kurgan wearing scary armor and um, slaughtering people by the hundreds on the battlefield. And then when they show him in modern times, he's in a cut business suit and he's shaved and he's got his hair pulled back and all Mm -hmm. that stuff. So they actually took the original concept of the Kurgan and made him into a villain in the TV show, which I had a... Th- uh, thought I was making or, or was coming up with what Tom was talking about. You remember we had that conversation a few months ago with uh, movies that would work better as TV shows. Really, mm-hmm. Highlander was the prototype of that. Oh yeah, I was thinking oh, that yeah, this too. Sort of, yeah, you that, go first, Josh, true. and I'll add. No, I was just going to say you guys totally glossed over my supernatural joke, but oh, I didn't even catch uh, it. Metatron. Oh, Metatron. No, I think I, that was I his name was... in in um, Highlander. That would have been hilarious because I've never seen Hi- Highlander. And Peggy, feel free to chime in here. Yeah. 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 You're, you're still here, right? Yes, I'm still here. You're awake, right? I am. I'm absorbing your wisdom. Oh, God. Oh, she's... <laughs> oh, no, we ruined her. Oh, oh no. 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 She's done. no, we should have warned you. Don't. Don't. Oh, God. <laughs> but uh, back to the topic of the show. That's another thing that the show kind of spoiled me on were the different sword fighting styles Mm -hmm. and this one you had several different swordsmen granted it was only like three or four but those required different styles to use Mm -hmm. and in this these fights in the movie it was just your standard hack hack lunge hack hack grapple 80s style when the show is like you had a guy with a battle axe who Fought with a battle axe style versus, say, a guy with a rapier, which was all like swishy, swishy, stab, stab. Mm -hmm. Hell, there was an episode in the series where there was knife fighting, which was one of the coolest fights. And this one, I was definitely missing that. It could definitely tell us, like, we can afford a sword fighting coach for a day. (laughs) Yeah, but you're right. Like, even when they showed, like, the fight between Ramirez and the Kurgan, Ramirez is using a Japanese samurai sword like you use a fencing rapier. He's mm-hmm. he's got his hand like he almost looks like a three musketeer fight. He's got his hand on his hip and he's got the sword extended out across his body. And he's he's like moving on the ball. He's moving back and forth on the balls of his feet as he's like fencing. Mm-hmm. That's a Japanese samurai sword. You can't use that kind of sword like that. It wouldn't work. You no. know, that the Japanese samurai sword is basically one giant razor blade. And you're supposed to use both hands and it's you use the cutting motion to slice your opponents. It's also mm-hmm. not really a sword you duel with because they dull really quickly. But I mean, that's. That's the splitting hairs over the swords, but you're right though, Tom, the, the show did a much better job of showing different people having different styles of swords. Like if you use an Arabian scimitar or a rapier or a katana blade or dual blades or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, it's small nitpicks. Uh, really? <laughs> it's I, it's I, one I, of those things we never would have noticed in the eighties, but yeah, we've been spoiled by modern cinema and mm. modern, like, modern fight choreography. Like, yeah, I, I'm not mm-hmm. saying the sword fights needed to be flashier than they were. One thing I did like about this movie was the fact that the sword fights were a little raw, but um, it literally felt like two kids in the backyard playing with their uh, brooms that they unscrewed off of the. <laughs> yes. Going. Yes. Like, Oh, okay. Take note of that guys. Okay. So does the, the swishy swishy. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's about what it felt like. You're not wrong at all. But then again, if you've been sword fighting for a thousand years and you know every style at the end of the day, it just does become like hack, hack, hack. You're both equal levels. Just like whoever can beat the other one the most wins, literally. Yeah. Probably. In the end, we all know that they would have just, you know, pulled out a gun, shot him in the leg, and cut his head off. Or b- bring, like, another person. Why don't they all just bring, like, a mortal person who can, like, kind of team up with them and interfere on the fight? I don't know. I But, like I said, that's part of, to me, that's part of the charm and mystery of the movie is why, like, even evil Highlanders, or not, they're not called Highlanders, they're called Immortals, why evil Immortals like the Kurgan. And later on in the sequels, they, even other evil ones, like the one played by Michael Ironside and the the second movie and the one played by Mario Van Peebles in Highlander three, like they're evil, evil, evil guys, but they still abide by all the rules. They duel one-on-one. They don't fight on Holy ground. They, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. like, so th- th- I, it's kind of, to me, that's kind of part of the mystery and fun of the film, but it doesn't make mm-hmm. it a good film. This is a movie I'd like to see or be interested in seeing if it could be remade with a really good director in modern storytelling and fight choreography. Ooh, not over, bring, not, uh, not over the top not over CG the top, sh- CG not shit, over but the just, top, no, Mm-mm. but bring Christopher Lambert back as a Sean Connery character. Yes. And yes, I would imagine you want uh, Kevin Smith to direct there. Dan? Uh, Absolutely uh, not. Mm, no. Ben this... Affleck is the Highlander. <laughs> yeah. With a cameo I mean... by Jay and silent Bob. No, um, no, I, I want Kevin Smith nowhere near this project. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't i don't know who i would get to direct it you know but i i think with a a decent director a decent cast and modern like storytelling kind of ways of doing things and modern fight choreography i think it could be a really good film mm-hmm. um yeah i think this would be definitely a good contender for a modern remake one that i would not be offended by if they remade it yeah, yeah like when yeah. they came out and said we're remaking home alone i'm like bitch bet you you, you best not yeah. be yeah like why do you need be fighting words but if you're like i want to remake highlander i'm like okay cool. yeah, yeah it. like like i said stop remaking good films home alone was a good movie it doesn't need to be remade mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. to the future was a good movie it doesn't need to be remade remake either bad films or like in this case mediocre films yeah yeah, agreed. Although if they did remake it, I would champion them to use the original script as well as the original ending. The original ending, there was not like a big battle for the quickening and the prize or anything. It, he, I mean, it was personal between him and Kurgan. He killed Kurgan and then he got done and he sensed another immortal nearby and he picked up his sword and carried on because the battle never ends. I don't like that. That and that ending, if it the successful movie, does lead to sequels. So yes, mud and yeah, sequels. Don't call it the gathering. Calling it a gathering, like yeah. it happens once every several hundred yeah. years. If he, if he just picks up his sword and he continues on, it leaves the door open for potential sequels. See, this movie kind of closed the door. It did. So then, when they come out with Highlander two, they've got to backpedal. And figure out a way to make him immortal again and make it to the fact, oh, no, actually, technically, you weren't the last one. And then they do it again in three. Well, actually, you know, it's like, no, no. Fool me kill the, yeah, kill the Kurgan, senses another immortal, picks up his sword, and goes and continues another life elsewhere. So I like that ending. Yeah, that that's a great ending. I honestly think that would have been a lot better. This kind of goes back to, I know, I know we talked about it a while back, but it's been a minute how we used to discuss how sometimes the more simplistic stories make the better movies. Like I would say that if you kept the script and just change the beats of the movie, throw a little money at it, some acting, good director, <laughs> this could be a lot better film, but honestly, you don't have to the story very if much. I was in charge of the project, my movie would be two parts. The first part would be in the past and the second part would be in modern day. Oh, you oh, pull an you're it. it that shit. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. I would do an it chapter one, chapter two. I would do the 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 first part is going through the past. I would do different parts of the past, like start them in in fifteen hundred Scotland and and then move them maybe to like seventeen hundreds Europe and then like eighteen hundreds Americas or something like. That. I would move them through time, but that's that would be my first movie, and that would establish the characters, and I would also establish the relationship between him and Kurgan or him and the bad guy, and then um the uh and then I would actually end the first movie in with killing the Connery character. And then I would move the second movie to the modern times. 
So ah, I like that. I like that. And you can like with enough gap between them, you can see show like by this point his personality is completely different. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'd watch both those movies. Yeah. And honestly, I'm. Lo- I would. We're we're out of the era of this trilogy anymore. Now it's just like the continuing story and or the duology of movies. Like I loved the two part aspect of it, chapter one and chapter two. I think that would be honestly a fantastic uh, way to reorganize this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would. I would do an it to this movie. That's that would just be me. And I would throw money at it. I would throw fight choreography at it. I would do what like Tom said. If you, you know, hey, you're using a Spanish rapier. We're take. We're sending you to go get trained on how to use a Spanish rapier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. i so hit us up, Hollywood. Um, <laughs> give us that money. We'll uh, yeah, we'll make this. We'll make this we got, happen. We, got, we can pitch ideas all day long. Just don't 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 ask us to write the script. Or yeah. do any actual work. Yeah, I mean, you guys have greenlit another bad GI Joe film. You can give us Highlander. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, shit. No, Josh Dan does have a point. Considering the shit that they come out with in Hollywood, no, we could absolutely write this film and I mean, be way better than anything yeah, they come up with. Yeah. If you want to throw 150 million dollars at a project that may or may not make your money back, call me. <laughs> <laughs> call me. Okay. Well, I can't. I'm sold. <laughs> yeah like if you want to uh, seriously if you want to burn a hundred two hundred 150 to 200 million dollars on a movie on two movies that may or may not make that money back combined call me i'll do it yeah for you guys I, yeah not because saying. between the three of us we have about a year's worth of film school done yeah <laughs> <laughs> fuck you <That's> josh <laughs> <laughs> oh you're an asshole <laughs> all right but i've i've said all i can say yeah now i'm now i'm 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 postulating making a better film now so i think we've reached the end of my final thoughts josh peggy anything else from you guys i got nothing peggy you said it better <laughs> fuck right. you josh <laughs> <laughs> but that's tonight's show as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. Our regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose. We really do appreciate it, and it really does help us out. And what would also help us out if you went out there and reviewed our podcast, gave it a star, five stars, smiley face, thumbs up. Uh, eggplant with a sweaty emoji whatever is the good one go with that one and and tell people why you gave us that hearty whatever is out there i don't know there are so many things in ratings Uh, you'll figure it out you're smart viewers and listeners we know you can do it. And be sure to join our Discord channel as well. The link is in the episode's description at firepit.podbean.com. You can also go directly to discord.me forward slash firepit, and it'll take you right to our Discord channel. Sign up and then uh, join the server. You can talk to Peggy, who is in the server. Uh, also, our last guest, Rob of Rob's Custom PCs, is also in the server chatting and discussing the latest episodes. And of course, our regular uh, listeners like Daniel. Yell, Tarek Thorne, and uh, Wink and GMP from the uh, Shattered Order podcast are also in the Discord server chatting things up and, like I said, discussing the latest episode. And I've noticed we've gotten a couple of new users, but they're not, they haven't really said anything in the server. Join the discussion. Really. Tell us your episode was great or it was terrible or, you know. Well, the thing is, they joined right after we showed pictures of ourselves. So, oh, I really God. Don't blame them. Yeah. yeah but, right. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Uh, mm, I keep some of those comments to yourself. Though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm taken them. ladies, but, um, <laughs> just, just join the discord <laughs> and you can email us at curtain call entertainment. INC at gmail.com. I know we're an LLC, but this is the email we registered. So, but if you want to send us a longer message, um, then you want to send in a Discord or a little bit more private message, you can always email us there and we will try to reply. I don't know what the interspersal guy says. I don't listen to the show. <laughs> but uh, you can also like us on Facebook 
or follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE. Both are linked in the episode's description as well. So we look forward to hearing from you. Awesome. Okay, he do you have... Oh, sorry, Nigel. I stepped on your toes. Go ahead. Oh, I was just asking. Uh, we're, we're doing shout-outs now, Peggy. So if you have anyone you want to shout-out, two or three people, go right ahead. Uh... <laughs> you put her on the spot. Good job. That was fantastic. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess I could shout-out to my friend, Stacy. I have plenty of cats I could shout out to. <laughs> uh, and, you know, of course, the Scotsman that did win first prize, according to the song. No. Oh, OK. Right. So. You guys can find out amongst yourselves which of the three of you did. Right. Well, you're not to brag or anything, but um, it wasn't me. And given my track record, I'm guessing it wasn't me either. So congratulations, Jay. Well, that explains well why Dan's taken. <laughs> yeah. Again, sorry, ladies. But uh, <laughs> from my end, I'd like to shout out two of our Facebook followers, Billman and Brar, two of our many hundreds of Facebook followers who tune in, pop in, linger, troll just to see what we're up to uh whether you listen to the episodes regularly check in every so often or just like seeing us post stuff online we appreciate it appreciate you uh helping to keep the fire pits burning i'd also like to shout out the tool that helps make my editing possible audacity audacity is a free editing software for audio It is what I use to stitch all of our lovely voices together and add in bits of fantastic foley and sound effects to all of our skits that help to make this such an enjoyable experience for you, for us, and for everyone. It is, again, a free program. They are not paying us to plug them, and we're not paying them at all for their product, but it's good. And so if you want to make a podcast of your own or music, vid- well, not music video, but music, songs, or just like the sound of your own voice, give them a go. It hasn't done me wrong yet. Excellent. And even though she is sitting here with us tonight, I will go ahead and shout out Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Uh, again, thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for your continued support and listening of the show. We do appreciate it. And I'm also going to shout out uh, Rob and wish him a belated happy birthday. Uh, we share a week. So uh, happy birthday, Rob. You can now act the age that everyone thinks you already were. <laughs> And uh, I would also like to shout out Zencaster, our recording software that we use. Web-based, free, fantastic, uh, has saved our bacon on numerous occasions and is so much better than Skype because it ha- did not lose the greatest selection section episode ever recorded. So special shout out to Zencaster. And uh, well, Vacation Josh is no longer with us. It's now back to work, Josh, so. But I would like to shout out my family. I know it's like shouting them all out in one clump is like having a, you know, birthday party that's shared. That couldn't be exciting. Yeah. Anywho. <clears throat> but yeah, shout out to my family for putting up with me and all of my terrible jokes about them because I can't stop talking during movies either. They love that. They absolutely love that. <laughs> which I always replied, I'm a professional podcaster. This is my job. <laughs> um, and also, shout out to Wink. Um, I don't know if you guys saw on our Discord, but uh, I was actually able to meet up with Wink in person. So if uh, GMP is listening, haha, I got one up on you. I don't have almost 300 episodes with him, though. So you got that on me. But uh, no, we had a good time. Went and had a lot of good beers and a lot of uh, some good food at a German bar. Yeah. Good times hanging out with you, Wink. Hope to do it again someday. And uh, shout out to Plex and Sync Lounge for hosting our viewing experience tonight again both free platforms that the uh, you can pay on plex for plex pass but you don't have to but uh so shout out to them that's all i got cool very cool well peggy you weren't there at the very beginning of our thoughts and input but we were glad that you were here to help us record or skit and join us for the watch and give your final thoughts it was a fantastic time i enjoyed it oh, oh no problem. any any time talk about budget though guys totally <laughs> but, uh, we will pin that discussion for later. Uh, in the meantime, we have a fighting thing to get to. Where are we going next week, Tom? 
Um, I think we're going to a whole other realm team. We're going to see a four-armed man and a Hollywood star and fight yep. it out. This with- week, this week we watched Immortal Combat. Yeah. Next <laughs> week we watch Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Damn it, Josh! Nice. Beat me too. Very awesome, Josh. That was a great pun. No, King it's is, not. King is no King is to Josh. Uh, there can be only one, Josh. There can be only one. It has begun, though. <laughs> Damn it, I, I finish my... him. We're going to be going that? to Mortal Kombat. You stole my joke. Damn it. I think we both arrived there at the same time. I just beat you to it. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I got to the joke faster. So you, did, you did. Your your sword was faster. But until next time, I've been Tom. I've been Dan. And I've been Josh. And have you been Peggy? No, I have not. Okay. <laughs> yes, I've been Peggy. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. Hey, look at that, a new arm. Fascinating. But your end is at hand. See what I did there? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Crude and slow, clansman. Your tackle's no better than that of a clumsy child. Well, you know, speaking of clumsy child, Mr. Um, <laughs> I'm out! Get over here, you coward. Yeah, I'm almost here. I just need to hide behind whatever this shade is. Wait, what's, what's this shade that's coming? Oh! Here we are, Pismo Beach and all the clams that we can eat. What a way for an OD friend of the channel to travel in a friggin' elevator. I mean, it's not even glass. Wait a minute. Since when is Pismo Beach in the Scottish Highlands? You know, I bet we should have turned left at Albuquerque. Josh, why are you talking like your Bugs Bunny? Uh, what's with all the morbidly familiar looking dead bodies? Didn't I just kill the lot of you? Nope. 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 You're good. <laughs> Yeah, Wrong floor. Just... Don't push yeah. the buttons. Just... There you go. Oh, hey, look, an arm. Yoinks. Gonna save you for later. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> high five. <laughs> See, I'm high using the dead arm to high five me. <laughs> this is gonna get use. That sounds more like you're doing a hand job again. Who says he's not? <laughs> School bus. <laughs> hey, what happens in the time elevator? We're we're right here, Tom. Please pull up shh, your pants. Shh, shh. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. It's like watching a train wreck. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>